Angling is a series of choices from an infinite number of options. Some simple, like what's your target species, to the complexities of understanding fish location on a seasonal basis. Then there's the myriad of presentation options. It's as mental of a game as physical. Each challenge is different, but the basic process remains the same. For angling is like solving a living, breathing puzzle. And to see the big picture, you need the fishing edge. Look at the size of that bird. Wow. <laughs> Look at the size of that pike. Oh. There's one. Mm. Good boy? Yep. Oh, ooh, that's a good one to Leaper. Come here. Whoa. Oh, there's one. Adam. Oh. It's just amazing. It is amazing. That's a big one. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right here, right next to the boat. Right next to the boat. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Wow, look at that thing there. Holy smoke. <laughs> look at the way he crunched on that thing. He doesn't want to give it back. Yeah. Ooh, that's a big fish, Jim. Big, big fish. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, uh, Jim, this might be pushing three figures, maybe over 100 smallmouth in a day. That doesn't happen all that often. Wow, look at that. A big one jumping. Whew. 100 fish day, man. 100 fish day on a lot of different presentations, a lot of fish we got to see bite, lots of fish chasing lures. It has been absolutely incredible. We're about to show you how it happened. Look at this, Jim, another tank. Jeremy, we're just about ready. Just give me a second or two. You know, Jeremy Smith and I are going to go out and do some smallmouth bass fishing today. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's supposed to be flat, calm, warm. It's probably, uh, I would imagine the water temperature is in the uh, mid-60s. It should be some really prime time for smallmouth bass fishing. You know, one thing that's really key for to be successful out on the water is the angler's ability to comb through their lures to figure out what is the magic bait of the day. You know, over the course of the year, uh, Jeremy Smith, myself, Al Lindner, Dave Sanda, you speak to a lot of different people in seminars across the country. And you have a lot of people who really inquire about a specific technique or a specific lure, you know, some magic bait. But realistically, every bait in their tackle box can be a magic bait. The real key is the right time in the right place. Jeremy, let's get the boat in. Look at that. Oh. This could be really interesting. I really like doing this. This is one of my favorite activities. Oh, there he is, big one. Another big great big one. big one. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. Ooh, man. Ooh yeah, that is go. a big one. Look at that. Wow. Big, big fish. Yeah, big, oh, big he's got another with buddy him. with him, too. It's a lot easier to get the net out of this guy. Get the net out. And you get him. There we go. No question about it. Speed is the really key in fishing. And what I mean by that is simply is fine tuning the speed for what the fish are willing to bite on. That's a beautiful brown bass. And it that really applies to just about any different uh, fish species you fish for. It really does. And no matter what bait you fish, you know, each lure in your tackle box has a specific range or uh, situation of where that bait works the best. And you as an angler, to be really successful, have to understand the nature of your individual lures. That's the key to being really successful on the water. Oop, oh, come on, you dirty dog. You just swatted at it. Oh, right here, right next to the boat. Right next to the boat. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I saw you hairballing, and I just had to try switching it up. 
a little soft plastic. I'm gonna grab it. He cracked it pretty good. Oh, you did go, you caught one on the grub. Yeah. I you know the it... crazy thing is? I was just out here, and if you didn't have the lure I've got on right now, you weren't chunking that, you were wasting a lot of time not catching fish. <laughs> but today, this has not been the hot bait at all. In just a short matter of time, things can change when it comes to not only smallmouth bass, but any bass. You know, and most uh, good bass anglers has real wide range of different baits in their tackle box. But it's up to the angler to use those tools to the maximum potential and to experiment out on the water. That is really what makes you a really very, very good angler. And to me, it's just over the years and time that we've actually had on the water for every, just about any different species of fish, it's always amazed me how little subtleties in presentation, whether it be just as simple as a retrieve, the change of a type of lure, where the bait is moving in the water column, how fast it's moving, determines if you're catching, you have a good day or a phenomenal day, or a, or a poor day on the water. That's the, the key, you know, and a lot of times you are fishing through fish and are not catching them because you have the wrong bait tied on. It's not moving in the uh, correct manner to trigger the fish into biting. Feels like a tank. Just unbelievably tough. Wow. I've only got two other rods <laughs> behind me here. We started out with a few, few lures we thought would most likely be good and so far they have been, but if you saw the rod locker that Jim's got in here, I think, it, what's it hold over, like 15 rods or something, Jim? Yes, and they have everything from crankbait to jerkbait, spinnerbaits. <laughs> so those are all stored in the storage below. And we thought the ape, we just brought the ape players out right now, but when things do get tough on a bite like that, there's a reason we've got a rod locker in this boat with, with the ability to store 15 rods and they're all pre-rigged with different presentations, rattle baits. We've got you know shallow running crankbaits, deep running crankbaits, topwaters, grubs, jerk baits, just every single thing you can think of that might apply to smallmouth bass fishing when you head out on the water. And those are all tools for the job, but it's always a lot nicer when it gets down to the end of the day and you just got one rod and reel in your hand and that's what you're catching everything in there <laughs> like that. That means you figured something out. We're going to turn around and move to a new spot. But before I do that, I want to show you something. You'll see on the deck of the boat here, uh, the rods that we came rigged up today with. Uh, I have a, a little uh, VMC hair jig. This is about a, a 1 8 ounce. That's a, for a real slow, subtle presentation. I have a Trigger X uh, 5 inch minnow on a little uh, head uh, VMC uh, half moon head. That's for like sort of re reeling it sort of halfway in the middle of the water column. The uh, flat wrap, which we've been catching most of the fish on today, is this bait, retrieving it really quickly, about, about maybe six to eight inches underneath the surface and then intermittently stopping the bait. Seems like that's the hot ticket. We've been throwing the X pop. This hasn't been producing today, but I can guarantee in the next couple of weeks that water temperature is gonna warm up. That's gonna be the hottest bait in this arsenal. Last but not least, the grub, which is what Jeremy was smoking them on two days ago. But for some reason right now, the fish aren't on the grub that good. But it just goes to show you when you go out in the water how you have to be willing to experiment with the baits in your tackle box. You ready for the next spot? Let's roll. Good anglers realize that fish can be very, very selective feeders. To figure out the magic bait of the day, we go through an experimental process with a variety of different presentations. The most important are depth, speed, action, and lure size. Depth is vital. What depth are the fish at, and what depth do I want my bait moving? You'll notice within our bait lineup, we have bottom bouncing baits, baits that move through mid-depth zones, and on the surface. Where do they want to feed? Speed is another crucial part of the puzzle. It's amazing how the relative speed and action of a lure will determine the number of bites. At times, fast and erratic is the ticket. At other times, slow or even a dead sticking tactic may be the only way to elicit bites. Lure size is another factor. When active, large, fast-moving baits can call fish from a long distance. On the opposite end of the spectrum, tiny finesse worms, hair jigs, tubes may be the ticket. 
Good anglers quickly experiment with a wide range of bait styles at different depths and let the fish tell you what the magic bait of the day is. Man, they got power a big square tail. Hey, Bubba. Come here. Whoa. These fish are kind of, they're not overly aggressive. It's not that time of year when you can take an X wrap and just throw it all over the place and make it really erratic and they smash it or have them come up and really crush up. Top water, it seems like a little more of a subtle presentation is the ticket. Jim's fishing that flat wrap pretty slow and that's a really subtle, you know, hard minnow bait style lure. It's not as erratic as the original or the uh, the X wrap is. And then I'm right now just messing around with a few things. I've been playing with a really slow moving popper. I've got a classic smallmouth bait on here right now. This is an eighth ounce VMC jig and a four inch trigger X grub and I'm just slow reeling it. Oh, Jim's hooked up again. Playing around to see what uh, what they happen to like the best. And my favorite's a flat wrap. Flat wrap. Yeah, this, flat is a, wrap this is a big one. This is a, bull, this is a real bullhead here. <laughs> Look at this guy here. He may even have, he may be a netting model. You want a hand? Well, it's just that you got those uh, These hooks are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, I'll handle them myself. You're good at that. Yeah. You're a good one man show. Come here, buddy. That's a beautiful bass. Oh, look at that guy there. Ooh, nice fish, Jim. Wow. They are so pretty. Man. Hmm. You know what was sort of interesting? We're, where we're catching these fish here because there's rock piles all over in here, and, but the fish are not really on the rock piles. They're in the flats in between these rock piles. And in between these rock piles are just isolated cabbage beds and seven, eight foot of water. And it seems those last couple of fish, we just came off a rock hump here, saddle it went deeper, and then it's gonna come up on another hump over here. The fish are a little bit deeper and a little bit more in it inactive. Oh, there Adam? he is. Yeah. Whoa. Nice. Oh. Doubled up. Double header. Double header. It's been sort of a stellar day. <laughs> the flat wrap has been holding its own though. Yeah, I got a real whopper on. Do I don't you? know about you. Yeah, yeah. I got one of these big oh. boys on here. Come here. Huh. Wow. You need a hand or you got it? I threw that players up there. Look at that guy there. Big bass. Oh, I got a bunch with mine too. I know. Yeah, there's some real giants on this spot. Wow. Woo. Look at them all running around down there. Oh, we got yeah. a good little honey hole here. Yeah. Well, it definitely pays off to just experiment with baits and then the retrieve. I think we got our, we're getting her we figured get, out now. We got really dialed in. Yeah. Boy, I'd say. Look at that guy there. Wow. Yeah, some, look at that guy. Beautiful brown bass. Look at that thing. Come here, get her back in the in the depths here. I got, Ooh. I think, a world record for length versus girth. Look at that thing. Oh, huh? look at that. <laughs> what has this thing been eating? Been stealing people's flat wraps? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. They were really aggressive. That was bang bang. There's a whole pack of them again, right on these edges we're finding these little subtle drop-offs next to some high spots that have both hard bottom with rock and cabbage on it where they just drop a foot or two that's what this was it just dropped into sand kind of little lip with some sand and deeper water and there's a whole pack of them sitting there it's really interesting you know where we just caught those two fish we fished around this point and it was bothering me that we didn't get any bites here so what I did is I backtracked and I went over and I got up on the top of the point. And sure enough, I was wondering why we weren't catching any. We pulled up and we missed them. You can see my track, track line. I fished along the outside, turned around, went back up and came right across the top and caught those two, two big ones back to back. And then there was a number more with them. A lot of the bass boys you go out with targeting largemouth, of course, have mostly bait casting rod and reel combos on the deck. And when it comes to brown bass, it seems like the biggest tool for the job most of the time 
is a nice spinning combo. And this right here is one of our Quantum Angling Edge Series rods. I've got a smoke 25 sized reel on here with 10 pound suffix 832. And this is really a sweet combo for being able to fish a lot of different baits. The 6-8 fast action, gives, I, could, I love fishing it for grubs. I'm fishing this little flat wrap on here right now. It's a great tube bait. I fish skitter props on it a lot of the time. It's just a really, really good versatile rod to have on deck for smallmouth fishing. Look, there's another one right there. Look at it, just looking at it. Great big one, look at it. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can see they're still sort of skittish. You can see, you know, they're, they come up and grab it. And that one out on the end of the cast. See, uh, Jeremy, I let that one really sit for a long period of time. Yeah? I think that's part, part, part of it. I think you got to sit there and just pause the bait for a little bit longer, you know, twitch, 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 and let it... This bait has got a really cool action to it when it's got a real fl flat... Uh... I had his buddy he just came up and bit... Wow! I know over the last number of years since this bait came out, I've actually done quite a lot of fit, fish on this bait. Not only smallmouth bass, but uh, walleyes as well and largemouth bass, and this is a really tremendous bait, this uh, flat wrap. Boy, it's got, oh, wow, that's a big one there. Wow, look at that, that thing there. Fish. Holy smokes. <laughs> look at the way he crunched on that thing. He's <laughs> really got it sort of, he doesn't want to give it back. Okay, come here. Boy, boy, he's got it in his tongue, and he's, he's, and he's sort of mad about it. As I was saying, this uh, flat wrap is a really cool tool. We actually use this a lot for, uh, not only for smallmouth bass, but we use it a lot, actually a lot for walleye trolling as, as well. We troll it behind uh, three-way rigs and bottom bounces. Boy, that's a beautiful smallmouth. Look at that thing. Boy, that's a, that's a big one. Huh, I wonder what he weighs. Big, let's just call it that, big. You can tell when it, it covers my hands. That's a big bass. Oh, Ooh, there's there a go. great big one too. Look at that, another one. Wow, there's some real bulls on this spot. Oh. Came off. Oh, he's gonna get it again. Wow. That's Ooh. when they got a good attitude. When you hook yeah, them, guys they come starting. off and they come racing back in to get but, it again. But I don't think that was the same one. I think it was a buddy of his. Oh, here he is, right here. Let's see if I can figure Look at that great, out. another two, three big ones right there. Look at that. Big tankers. Oh, big Got him? Yep. Man, these boys are on. Or they like this presentation, I know that much. I don't think this one here is as big as that other one. You can see his head shaking too much. Yeah. Just the way that we fish these fish it could be really, some of it could be applied to largemouth bass fishing, and I don't think that a lot of guys do it as much as they, as they could, or the way. It, you know, where we go to really extreme size extremes with uh, smallmouths to bring a really tiny, little, tiny, little bait moving, moving very, very slow, and you'll catch numbers of really big bass. You know, we were just fishing this tournament over in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, and actually, I think the average weight for the probably the top ten teams had over a five-pound average for two days. It was just incredible, big big numbers of giant smallmouth bass and a lot of the guys were either fishing two baits they were either fishing a hair jig like this or a tube a four inch tube and they'd cast it out and drag it on the bottom in 12 to 14 foot of water. Isn't that amazing how a smallmouth bass can be a fish that'll fly three feet out of the water to smash a top water lure. They'll chase baits down you can have them hooked with a hard bait they jump it they throw it they hit it again and other times they're swarming all over around your boat you can make them bite, and when they do, it's just a slight little, slight little mush on the end of your line. But the bottom line is, no matter what the day, what the conditions, if you're persistent oh. <laughs> and you experiment, you can catch these things. If you're a round fish, it always just comes down to presentation subtleties in order to catch them. Sometimes it's color, sometimes it's size, sometimes it's shape, but they will bite. Stick with it. I'm not kidding you. 
This is a great article. It's titled The Gospel According to the Olympics. And it talks about how certain athletes deal with their faith and being a, a high profile athletes in, in the Olympic arena and uh, uh, constantly being asked questions on television, da, da, da. And it gives testimony by people like Dawn Harper with track and field, Kevin Durant basketball, Brady Ellis in archery, uh, Tobin Heath soccer, Kendrick Ferris weightlifting, Brittany Viola diving, big names in their individual fields. And they name many, many more. And then one that really got my attention was American gymnast Jonathan Horton. Here's what he had to say. When is it right to hide your faith and when is it right to show your faith? He told us that when you feel like hiding it, you need to show it. And when you feel like you're being prideful and you want to show it, hide it. It would be really easy when you're on live TV and the whole world is watching you to want to hide your faith. You want to avoid the persecution that the world is going to give you for it. But it's at that moment when I really need to show it. It's when I need to use my platform as a gymnast to show what the Lord has done for me. You know, being in the media all my life and uh, 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 being exposed to the press and a lot of people in a lot of different ways, I can relate to what he said here. Hey, I wanted to share that with you. Say from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.